Hi guys, so in today's video I'm going to be doing a little follow-on from the last video I did and it's on whether or not we can stop ageing. So this is part two. So in the last video I talked about calorie restriction and how it's been shown in many different animal studies to increase lifespan but also how there's conflicting kind of results that are coming out from the human trials and I talked about what sort of problems might be associated with calorie restriction. So if you didn't watch the last one and want to then check it out. I'll put the link in the description box so it's easy to find. So in part two I want to talk about two different approaches and these are a bit more direct than the calorie restriction approach. So both of these therapies are trying to stop aging by interfering with the aging process specifically. So before I explain what the therapies are, I'm just going to give a very quick and brief overview of what happens at the cellular level to cause aging. So each time our cells divide, a portion of the very top of our chromosomes, known as a telomere, is lost. And this is okay because telomeres are non-coding regions and their job is basically to protect the important coding DNA which lies beneath them. But over time, because our cells are constantly dividing, the telomeres become shorter and shorter, and eventually they will reach a critical point where they trigger what's known as a DNA damage response. And this forces the cells to undergo senescence. So basically, it forces them to stop dividing, so you get permanent cell cycle arrest. And the accumulation of lots of senescent cells over time leads to aging because you have a loss of the ability to regenerate and senescent cells also are quite pro-inflammatory and they secrete a lot of cytokines and chemokines and when there's overcrowding of senescent cells you can get damaged tissues. So seeing as telomeres are really important wouldn't it be great if there was a way to lengthen them and to stop them from becoming shorter? Well, there actually is. So we have a protein in our body called telomerase and basically it adds bases onto the end of our chromosomes each time it divides. So it keeps the telomeres long. And telomerase is really highly active in embryonic stem cells. Obviously, that needs to generate all the cells in the body. So it needs to be able to keep the telomeres longer even when it's dividing so rapidly. So some adult cells do retain some telomerase activity, but the majority of somatic cells don't. So many researchers are trying to reintroduce telomerase via telomerase gene therapy. And in some my studies, there's been some promising results. So it's been shown to increase the lifespan by 13 to 24%. So there are also some biotech companies that are trying to work on this. Um, and I did come across an article. So there's a woman in the US named Elizabeth Parrish, and she is the CEO of a biotech company called BioViva. And basically, she has claimed to have tested her telomerase gene therapy that was developed in her lab on herself, and also now claims that her cells are 20 years younger due to that. I mean, personally, I think well, A, I'm not sure if we can trust that this has even happened, but B, I think she's a little bit crazy for doing this. There's no evidence that there were any preclinical studies before she tried it, so it would be very, very dangerous. But yeah, people are working on it, researchers are working on it, and it seems like quite a viable way to increase lifespan, I guess. So the other therapy I wanted to talk about is senolytic drugs. So as the name kind of suggests, or you've got senescence and lytic, uh, meaning basically to destroy. And these drugs kill senescent cells. So the whole point is that you would administer these drugs, they would bind senescent cells and kill them specifically whilst leaving healthy cells intact. So some senolytic drugs are now being tested in humans. So the example I'm going to use here is a small group of people that had pulmonary fibrosis so they were testing this on disease patients and not healthy controls and the outcome of this wasn't necessarily to see if there was an increased lifespan it was just to see whether there was any improvement in the scarring of the lungs which happens with this disease the senolytic drugs they used were desatinib and quercetin they concluded basically that it was an encouraging study and that it warranted more larger studies to be done with these drugs 
So now while I think both of these therapies sound like valid avenues for researchers to pursue, I think there are some problems. So first of all, not all senescent cells are bad. And actually senescence is an anti-cancer mechanism that the body uses to try and prevent cells that have become cancerous. We're not actually sure whether introducing these drugs into a patient or a person might actually cause cancer itself. And also then the studies that have been done in in humans are very preliminary. So I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So thank you for watching the part two of my Can We Stop Aging duo. I'm going to be doing some new videos on cancer and cancer therapies. I'm particularly going to focus on immunotherapies, which is currently quite a hot topic and something I'm really interested in. So yeah, if you think that sounds like something you'd be interested in, um, subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for those videos. Thanks.